Hi, this is Mike Quinn of LM76. My guest today is Anders Thorman from Ceramic Speed, LM76's business partner for industrial stainless ceramic hybrid bearings. How are you, Anders? I'm good, Mike. Thank you very much. And thank you for the invitation. So uh, I'm sitting here in Denmark. It's uh, late afternoon. Uh, the, the team has, has gone home, factory still for today. So plenty of time to do this with you. <laughs> Well, great. I, I just want to start out. Um, can you give uh, can you give us a thumbnail sketch of Ceramic Speed, a brief history of the company, company goal, and if you will, the, the soul of the idea that that um, the genesis of uh, Ceramic Speed. Of course, yeah. So Ceramic Speed is all about efficiency. Starting out with our founder Jacob. He was a keen sportsman, and he uh, he uh, set uh, actually two world records on inliner skates. The first one did 400 kilometers in 24 hours. Then he went back home. He looked at the bearings. He got sponsored with the first ceramic bearings, put them together with special grease, special scenes. 12 months later, he did he he, uh, he beat his own record and did 500 kilometers. So, with this idea and with the feeling on his own body that this product could do stuff that, that traditional bearings couldn't do. He took the idea to the, to the bicycle business. And from there on, we grew into industrial applications also. We are down, we are now, we were found in 2009. Today, we are 90 employees here in Denmark. Uh, we have a, a broad variety of customers within sports and within industrial applications. And so what's driving us, it's, uh, we have basically our saying is improving efficiency. That's our goal. So improving efficiency with the customers, less downtime, more capacity, more output, and, le and increasing efficiency, of course, internally in our internal processes to get things right faster and cheaper, so on. So this is, you know, in a, in a very, very short sentence, this is ceramic speed. I appreciate that. Um, one of the, the, the product that we're gonna really kind of um, center upon today uh, is Corotech, and that's an FDA uh, product that is uh, used widely in applications where there's high pressure uh, washing and caustic foaming agents. Can you tell me more about your FDA Corotech stainless ceramic hybrid bearings and why they're so successful in FDA caustic washdown applications? What makes it different from the competition? Yeah, so to understand the history again, so where we are in Denmark, you could compare to maybe Nebraska, in the US, so it's a rural area. There's a lot of dairy, there's a lot of cattle, and there's a lot of food industry. So when we entered into the industrial world of bearings, our first big end user customers, they were in the food industry and they still are around us here locally in Denmark. So it's, it's meat and it's dairy. And, and common for that, as you say, they have FDA requirements upon everything they do. Uh, they need to use stainless steel, and they do these frequent washdowns. And this is a huge uh, challenge for bearings, but it's a huge opportunity for us. So basically uh, we go in with, to these customers basically with our, uh, we have a product series, which we call Corotech. You mentioned the name already. Corotech is a, is a, a family name for a series of ba bearings made of stainless steel, uh, always made with FDA approved materials in the seals, FDA approved lubricants, and of course, also the F FDA approved uh, uh, materials for the cage. So it's an FDA approved product, it's stainless steel, and it's with ceramic balls as everything else we do. And maybe just one, one, one uh, bit of information. I have here two balls. One is shiny and steel, one is uh, black and ceramic. The huge difference between these two, I feel it, you, do, you, you can't see it, but that's the weight. The ceramic ball is only half the weight of steel. On the other hand, it's twice the hardness. So it's a really, really hard, uh, dense material. The surface roughness is only one quarter of a, uh, the equivalent steel ball. And on top of that, you don't get the, the same uh, thermal el elongation. You don't get the same uh, corrosion. It's, it's chemical resistant and it's uh, electrically insulating. So a lot of a lot of advances put into this very, very fantastic material. So all the bearings we do, they are focused around the ceramic bowl. We call them hybrid bearings because we sort of put together two materials as a hybrid. So one is the ceramic bowl and then the, the steel rings. Steel rings could be uh, traditional bearing steel, but in this case for the FDA, 
uh, requirements in the food industry, we use stainless steel. So back to the FDA and the stainless steel core tech bearings. So in my view, all stainless steel bearings, they have an implicit weakness. Uh, the weakness is that the stainless steels available, they are not, you cannot harden them to the same hardness as what you can with traditional bearing steel. And hence you get more bearing damages. You often get um, uh, surface initiated damages. And when you combine this with, with the fact that in the food industry, you, uh, you corrupt the lubrication, you uh, flush out the grease by washing or whatever, uh, then you get problems re really, really soon and, and much too soon, according to many customers. So basically, when we entered the industry, we saw many applications with only 10, 12 weeks of bearing service life. And obviously, to stop a big machine and to replace bearings every 12 weeks is, is not a good business case of, at all. So next question, why doesn't this happen to, to our core tech banks? Yeah, that's down to, again, to, the, to, the, yeah, to a, a number of things. Most importantly, to the ceramic ball. The ceramic ball, as I mentioned, is non-conductive. And hence, it cannot weld to another material. A steel ball under pressure with no lubrication separating it from the raceway will uh, basically weld to the raceway under high pressure. These small welds is called micro pitting. They are then, of course, broken up when you roll and roll and roll, and the, the whole, the whole uh, theory then repeats and repeats and repeats and, and breaks down the, the bearing very, very soon. That's what we see. This cannot happen in the stainless steel bearing. It cannot happen for the simple reason that a non-conductive ceramic material can never weld to a steel ring. So this alone gives us a huge advantage in the stainless bearing industry. On top of that, and I know we will be talking much more about that, Mike, but on top of that, of course, choosing the right seals, choosing the right lubricant, putting everything together as the right package makes a difference. So this is the whole idea of our Corotec FDA approved bearing series. Yeah, one of the things that uh, uh, ceramic balls, uh, uh, they, they don't suffer spalling. And spalling is, uh, as you know, is when a, under load, a steel ball will actually deform. And when it deforms, it starts leaving specks of metal along the travel path, which also becomes an issue because it get, they get worn into the, the uh, retainer. Exactly. And so this is down to the, the basically the, of course, the nature, but also the process of how the ceramic balls are manufactured. A steel ball is usually manufactured out of a cylindrical pellet. So you'll have a, you'll have a wire and you cut it into small cylinders and then you, you, you uh, forge these into round balls. This means that if you would cut a steel ball and measure 10 or 20 different uh, points of hardness, you'll get different results because the, the forging ratio is different in any given place of the steel ball. A ceramic ball is made uh, uh, with a, a process, it's called HIP, it's a, a hot isostatic pressing. And, and during this process, the, the, the fragile newly formed ceramic ball uh, is, is put into a vacuum chamber and, and the expo not vacuum, sorry, into a pressure chamber and exposed to a huge amount of pressure and huge amounts of, of heat under uh, during 24 to 48 hours, depending on, on ball size. So this means that, that a ball like this, I just show it again, a ball like this is completely homogeneous. If you cut this and measure even 100 points inside the ball, you'll find exactly the same hardness wherever you measure. And this, this, is, this then results in what you're saying, Mike, that this ball will not spall and it will not crack. Um, and it's still smooth, so it actually protects and repairs the raceway when you get small indentations from outside particles, stuff like that. So it's just a, a, a quite unique product. Uh, can you tell us, or uh, give us an example, uh, an application example, where Corotec has, has really outperformed um, a competitive product? Yeah, so obviously we sell these uh, to a number of customers every, every, every single day. Uh, the, one, the one for me that stands out is, is really, uh, it's, it's an a, a extreme example. Uh, so the customers in the food industry, actually they do uh, cat food and dog food, but at least here in Europe, that's under the same FDA requirements as, as human food. Uh, so, and the application is, is a very simple one. It's, it's, uh, it's like a hinge function. 
So you have two um, two claws like that, opening and closing, opening and closing, for welding the plastic bag when the food has put been put into the bag. The customer came to us many years ago, even before I started here in Surround Street, um, and they described this problem. Again, I think they were down to eight or 10 weeks of, of service life for the bearings, uh, normal uh, stainless steel uh, standard bearings. And, and in this case, we are down again to this uh, welding issue. The thing is that a bearing that doesn't rotate, these bearings never did a full rotation. They opened and closed, so an oscillating movement. When you do that, you have frequent st start stops and you never build up a, an appropriate uh, lubricant film. So you have to imagine that the oil inside the grease, inside the bearing needs to build up as an oil film separating the raceway and the ball. If you don't have rotation at a certain speed, that will never happen. It's just like when we have aqua planning with our cars. If we go slowly, we, we pull through the water and we will be standing on, on the tarmac. So in this case, you had a bearing situation where the bearing was never well lubricated. So each time the bearing was in function, it would be a steel, steel movement. And this just eats away the steel uh, over time. And in this case, 10, 12 weeks, they could replace all, all the bearings. We came in there exactly the same bearing size, exactly uh, the same build-in method, no, no engineering changes at all. We came in with the Corotech bearing with our recommended uh, grease for the FDA application, normal rubber seals. And the bearings, they lasted not, uh, not 10 to 12 weeks, but 11 years. I did the math, it's a 44, uh, 44 it's a magnitude of 44 longer than, than the equivalent uh, standard bearings. And this is, of course, really extreme. It's a bad business case for me, but it's a good business case for the customer. <laughs> <laughs> and he was uh, extremely happy, uh, so happy, so they, they sort of forgot the bearings in between. But um, they came to us uh, after 11 years and bought a second set of bearings. And again, um, by, by introducing the ceramic ball into the, uh, in combination with a good stainless steel, you take away this problem of micro welding, of micro pitting. And this was the, the, the very root cause of this failure. So we took away the root cause and then the bearing could, could last until there was no more grease in the bearing. So that is one of the more extreme cases. But I have to say, Mike, every day, I mean, uh, for cutters in the meat industry, for even just simple transportation equipment in, in the food and beverage industry, where you have a little bit of moist around, we, we always, uh, we always uh, perform two, four, eight times longer than standard bearings. We've had, uh, uh, you and I have worked with uh, one of the largest yogurt companies in the world. And we have had tremendous success uh, taking applications where Bearings were failing in six, seven, eight, ten weeks, and we have been over a year so far without any replacements, and uh, they're very happy. <laughs> Customers usually are happy when you perform like that. Yeah, but they come having, back. <laughs> but we're having great success, and and uh, everyone who's used our products, uh, ceramic speed is uh, is high on their list, well thought of. And uh, the life of the bearings, well, they speak, it speaks for themselves. Um, along with Corotech, can you uh, give me a sense of the difference between traditional grease, which is used in stainless steel bearings, and SLT dry lubricant? Of course, yes. So SLT dry lubricant, I'll just show this. This is not a bearing, but this is a, a sample of SLT. And uh, for those of you looking, you'll see a white square inside this uh, this uh, black circumference. And the, the, the white stuff is actually the SLT. If I put my finger on it like here, it feels to me like uh, like a candle, like sterine. Uh, so what it is, it's, it's actually a, a polymer. It's a plastic, basically. It's everything, again, FDA approved. It's, it's uh, approved for direct contact with food and ingredients, but it's a polymer containing uh, a percentage of oil, basically. So we have developed this technology where we, we put it into the bearing in liquid form. So in, in room temperature, it will be just liquid here. Uh, and we obviously have, we have a secret formula for this. It's, there's some oil in there, FDA approved oil, and there's some PTFE, some, some anti-friction uh, particles. Uh, so we mix it all together. We put it into the bearing. And then we cure it. So basically, it's like doing a cake. We bake it, 
and it becomes hard uh, and and um, yeah, it becomes a solid like this. So with this inside a bearing mic, and you know this, uh, it will never come out. So on the downside, the one downside maybe is that this is a use and throw away bearing because you cannot replace a lubricant. You'll have to do it with a knife and screwdriver, and that's not practical, to be honest. On the positive side, you cannot flush it out either. Uh, so in these very, very harsh environments, and Mike, I know LM76, you are active in the FDA industry in, in the US. You know all the bad cases of water and, and spray and even submerged applications. You've seen it all. In all these really, really tough applications, this product, the SLT, is, is uh, let's say, it's not a cure for all, but it's a cure for many, many difficult applications. I have to say, just to, to make it clear, usually we would supply the bearing like this. So we have SLT inside and a good NVR rubber seal on the outside. So this is sort of the best protection we can ever give the bearing. And, and again, as you said, uh, we know it from the from our customer in the yogurt industry in, in, in the US and many customers here in Europe, it's just a tough it's just a tough solution to the to the worst applications. I need to mention two limitations. As this is a polymer matrix. Obviously, temperature is a is a, that has limitations. We say we run this at, at uh, uh, temperatures of 90 degrees. This is Celsius. Sorry, I'm from Europe. <laughs> 90 <laughs> degrees Celsius. Uh, Continuously, we can go a little bit higher with peak temperatures. The other limitation, of course, is speed because we enter a huge mass of this stuff into the bearing. So running very high speed, as a hybrid bearing would normally be happy to do, is a problem, then you will heat it up. So, but, but it's not bad. I mean, for 90% of all applications we know in the food industry, for agitation, for, for transport, for cutting, for shifting and so on, this, this will do nicely. And it yeah, does I nicely. I know I've seen applications uh, where the high pressure wash will get behind the seal, takes out the lubricant, or it takes some of it out, and then the caustic foaming agents get in there and, and uh, corrupt it to the point where it leaks out. It actually looks like a gravy coming out of there. Then the balls start to rust, and then you get cross corrosion between the balls and the, the retainer uh, or the running path, and then the bearing seizes. So that really does speak well to that. Um, we're gonna uh, do a couple more of these, and I think our next one is gonna be uh, on motor bearings. But, yeah. um, but uh, I wanna thank you for your time. Uh, it's wonderful working with you. Uh, ceramic speed products are absolutely phenomenal. And we do have that, uh, I think, singular uh, guarantee, four to eight times the life. Okay, exactly. thanks. Thanks for watching. Thank you very much, Mike. Thank you for having me on board. Oh, thanks, Anders. Yes. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.